In the last video, we took a look at RBD constraints, and as one of you pointed out in the comments, you are actually able to affect these constraints at the SOP level. So we'll take a look at that, and we also wanna take a look at how to create groups and a couple of different ways to do that. Let's go ahead and dive into the scene. So this project file will be available on Patreon. If you want to grab it, you can grab it and take a look through everything that I've done. And then this bust model will be available from 3dscans.com. So you can grab it there. I'll leave a link to that in the description as well. So let's jump down an RBD material fracture. And what I'm going to show you, I would recommend using for the most part, but there are some times that I've seen it kind of act a little weird. So we'll cover that here in just a moment, but let's set the scatter points up to like 15. We'll give this just a second to cook again. And then we can drop down an RBD exploded view to make sure that it is giving us something that we want. Just drop that down. We'll take a look, make sure this is all good, which it is. And then let's drop down our bullet solver and we'll wire in our different things here. And then in the bullet solver, we would come to this uh, collisions tab. Let's create a ground plane. So this sets on the ground plane. And then you would think that this setting would be in the constraints tab, but if I scroll through here, there is nothing in here that relates to that. You actually have to come to the advanced tab and this little checkbox right here under the constraints allows you to overwrite the constraints at the stop level, which is pretty useful. So now if we drop down an attribute noise, we can wire this on up and let's go ahead and just set the animation, make it animated. Let's also come into our solver here. Let's drop down a geometry wrangle and we can come make it run over primitives because all of our constraints are in the primitives. Let's also make sure it's running over the constraint geometry and we'll do if at CD uh, cd.r is greater than 0.5 then we will remove the primitive so we'll do remove prim and then we need to set our geometry so the geometry that we're running on and then at prim num and then we'll remove any extra points if there were any we can dive up here and now if we press play we should see that we have some breaking going on actually it's going to not work properly because I forgot to set this to primitive as well. So we'll press play now and we should see some breaking start to happen. And you can see actually what I'm talking about right here. So this doesn't actually happen every time, which is a little interesting, but it does happen from time to time. If I drop down a null and take a look at our constraints, you can see that our constraints are being removed but then they're also being added back at certain times and that creates this weird little jittering that you've got going on. So you may not want to use this in all cases because you'll get some, some weird effects. And maybe that's because I did the just the R channel of the wrangle here. Let's take a look and see if it does it now. It still did it. So I'm not sure really what causes this. If you know what causes this, then let me know, but it's a, a little bit weird there. Actually, let's come back in here and we'll actually, we're just gonna remove this because we're going to do something different. We'll create some groups. So we can use groups with this. So the groups will actually work. So we'll drop down a group node. We'll wire in our constraints. We're on primitives here. And then we'll use a bounding box for this. So let's take a look at what we got. Let's move this up and also make it a little bit bigger. And actually, let's just, we don't need to animate this, but it does work with animation. Actually, let's, yeah, let's just animate it just to show that it does work. So we'll set a keyframe there and then we'll move down, just take out the head there. And then we can come back to our bullet solver and we can say group one, this should work. And if I reset and play now, you should see that it starts to break the head. So you can see that it is working. If we go a little bit further, it would break all those constraints. But 
Overall, it is working. You can see that the group works there. But if you don't want to create a group through that, we can just bypass this. You can actually do it in a wrangle or in a in a pop or a vop. Sorry, not a pop, but a geometry vop. We need to set this to primitives. Come to the data bindings. Make sure we are on the constraint geometry. We'll wire this in and let's go ahead and dive on it in here. And we're going to use the position of our points here. So we'll do a vector to float. Now you can do this however you want, but we'll just use a vector to float here. We'll do a compare. And we will take the Y channel. So if it is greater than, and then we'll just promote that parameter. And then we actually need to create the group. So we can do that with a set attribute node. And we will wire this into the value. And if I actually take a look at our group here, if I undo that, if I take a look at our group, you can see that if I look at our group, we either have a one or a zero in our group. So it's basically just a one or a zero to determine whether it's not, it is in the group or it's not. A zero will be not in the group, a one will be in the group. And this compare node will return either a zero or a one. So we'll type that or we'll pipe that into the value. And then the other thing that you need to set is going to be the point or primitive. And we want to do our primnum. So we'll put that into that I one. Then we want to set this to, we'll call it group one, same thing that we had. And then we'll set this to a primitive group. And if I come back and just disable this, we can then go from, let's see, frame 30, come into our geometry VOP here, and we can set this to like 3.5, I think is above the head. And we can go to frame one here and we'll also keyframe that. And actually I wanted it to be at like a value of two at frame 30. So now if we press play, we should see that this starts to break the head apart as well. And you can see that it does, and it's only working on the head because that's what's included into our group. So pretty cool stuff there. There's a couple different ways that you can go about creating groups. Some will work in certain situations and other times you may want a more complex selection that you can't get dynamically in the group node. So you may want to use this method as well as you can Make sure that you enable that overwrite with SOP to allow you to actually change the constraints at a SOP level. Pretty cool stuff there, but it doesn't always work in every situation as you guys saw. So if, like I said, if you guys know what's kind of causing that, you can let me know in the comments, but not really sure what that is. I did go through and try unchecking all these or setting never to all these constraints just to see if that would do anything. And that didn't do anything with that either. So not sure, but uh, feel free to let me know if you do know. But anyways, hopefully this helped you out. If you want to learn more about Houdini and RBDs, I have a whole playlist on my channel about RBDs, so you can take a look at that and learn some more things if you're new to them. I also have a, just a bunch of other random stuff on Houdini. If you want to learn more about Houdini in general, then make sure to check out those videos as well. But anyways, like I said, hope you learned something and have a good day.